Welcome, welcome. Let's talk about Planet Watch and their token model. Along the way, I'll share some recent updates, full agenda ahead of us. So let's jump right in. Let's begin by analyzing what this project is, what does it do, and who's behind it. It consists of a diverse team that aims to leverage air quality sensor data onto the blockchain, which itself is immutable and tamper resistant as long as Algorand continues to operate. Algorand is a very energy efficient protocol, and like Bitcoin, it doesn't consume a whole lot of electricity to reach consensus. Ultimately, Planet Watch aims to improve environmental monitoring worldwide. This requires a mass deployment of carefully selected and approved sensors that are highly reliable, affordable, and easy to install and operate. This is where I, as consumers, come in to participate. I purchase these and go through the setups. As a result, I'm rewarded in Planet tokens for the air quality data these uh, sensors stream. Now let's take a closer look at the core team behind this ambitious initiative. A total of 16. Uh, these are core members of the white paper and their website. So much diversity in the circle. You got few PhD recipients who are data scientists. You got one who specializes in uh, sensor and air quality. You got engineers, mobile, web and blockchain developer. Even got legal expertise weigh in on this matter. At the core, we have Claudio, who serves as the CEO. Diving deeper into the pioneer initiating this global effort, you can see he has quite an impressive resume. PhD in theoretical physics, formerly a research physicist, international consultant, and previously worked at CERN, which is the European Organization for Nuclear Research, one of the world's largest and most respected centers for scientific research well known for housing the large collider, um, held a number of positions there. He's also the CEO and co-founder for other companies including Terabi, which is an IoT based company that builds lightweight, easy to use sensor modules and smart solutions. Navigating here, uh, we can see that the company is doing quite well, trusted by many reputable companies including Ariva and ABB. I've personally worked with ABB on dead tank and live tank circuit breakers used on extra high voltage substations. So I know it's a huge company. Uh, a couple more affiliates here and here and much more. Aside from Terabi, he was also the CEO of Innovatics, which is a consulting service firm for large companies also was the owner and CEO of another consulting firm, Synthesis Consulting. Last but not least, uh, he was the CEO of Unico, uh, Unico, which is an NFT crypto project that began in 2017, but changed gear by the end of 2019. This NFT project was aimed to creating a user-friendly platform to better facilitate collectible items out of digital content and be able to monetize them. The idea was to enable anyone to turn their own digital content such as art, photography, music, videos, uh, and so forth into blockchain certified digital collectibles. It started with Ethereum but later moved to the EOS blockchain. Uh, what's crazy about it is that NFT was already a thought back in 2017 yet it just recently gained popularity early this year of 2021. This uh, ICO, Unico, later in 2019 was uh, announced to become a tech asset into the Planet Watch portfolio. So here's a blog that they manage. Um, let me show you the announcement on the 25th of December in 2019. Pretty much uh, just summarizing the recap concerning Unico being part of Planet Watch uh, portfolio. Uh, you can read more about it in the blog if you're interested. Here he summarized uh, by giving a quick recap and uh, where do we stand uh, as of today back in 2019. But ultimately to protect uh, Unico investors, they've decided to embed Unico into Planet Watch by paying out in Planet's tokens. 
Um, I couldn't find any further details on the amount Unico tokens equivalent to the planet tokens, but the exchange was uh, communicated through social media outlets such as Twitter or Telegram. The Unico website uh, has now been redirected to what we know today as the Planet Watch IO, which is quite interesting to me. Just for laughs and giggles, I've checked the age of two of the domains to reinforce some concerns, and it looks uh, quite healthy. Terabee.com created in 2012, and it's still up and running, and it seems to be doing quite well. Planet Watch is um, roughly two years and two months now. So all in all, Claudio has gained a lot of uh, experience under his belt based on his resume. I became more vested into this company after learning about it and who's pushing for this global effort. I've attended many of the AMAs. One thing I really like is that he seems to have a very sincere character, does not hype the project with over promises. His international consulting background along with his previous knowledge of running an IoT sensor company uh, coupled with uh, his experience with CERN and my personal experience makes him the perfect candidate for Planet Watch. Before we jump into uh, tokenomics, let's briefly talk about Planet's tokens in terms of where do you buy and sell and what are the use cases. As of today, it's only available on Bitfinex, but in the last AMA it was noted that exchange listing remains their high priority. You can use these tokens to shop and pay on the um, Planet.io web store. Okay, tokenomics, let's get into it. One of the many exciting parts of the white paper that describes the token mechanism, including allocation and distribution by each type. The current version is one dated March 2021. Um, I encourage you to read through all the sections if you're interested, but in the interest of uh, today's video, I'm just going to focus in the t uh, token model which starts on page 44. Starting with the generalities, this page lets you know what the max token supplies is. You can see on this pie chart there's a total of 4.5 billion of that and roughly 95% goes to data rewards following the launch. You got a small percentage, 5% uh, for initial allocation and very small for uh, during the initial test phase. And here's the token release schedule for the next 60 years. We can see that initially we start at roughly half a billion to uh, planet tokens per year. And as time progresses, every four years, it gets halves. So the highlights shows you um, the highlights on this table here shows you every four years the tokens per year reduces by half. So starting at year one we have this much, um, roughly half a billion, and on the fifth year it reduces down to 267 million and so forth. And going to the ninth year gets half of that and uh, the same pattern repeats pretty much uh, this amount decreases as we head towards the 60th year where we finally reach our initial goal of 4.273 billion planet tokens as described on the previous page. Let's scroll down to the subsection 4.2 entitled Data Reward Policy um, where they talk about the global effort to deploying uh, decentralized sensors across the globe in return, the sensor owners are rewarded in planet tokens. One thing to note is for outdoor sensor, it depends on the stream location and availability of streams. Uh, going down to this section, it talks about the four different types of sensors. Uh, type 1 and Type 2 are your outdoor devices. Your Type 3 is the indoor, while your Type 4 is the uh, portable ones as in the Atmo 2 Pro and this table shows you the data streams intervals in minutes you can see there's different types uh, type 4 it streams every two minutes uh, and a 24 hour period it can stream up to 720 uh, streams daily for type 3 it's uh, less aggressive with five uh, minute intervals 
down below is a very important paragraph where it says your results may be higher or lower but if it's higher the default acts as a cap so the cap is that table there let me go down to this reward pool where it shows you by each sensor type how much uh, they're entitled to earn so this is based on the half billion token initially uh, we spoke about so let me go back up uh, for reference here so, okay so this number here half a billion so let me jump back again okay you can see that type 1 earns the most while type 2 3 and 4 all have the 20 percent now note this is just for year one budget uh, your other years might change so you know just to verify these uh, you can see that type 1 is 40 percent type 2 3 and 4 it's just 20 percent and I'm gonna do a Excel math just this cell times that heart budget for the first year you can see that the numbers add up uh, you know exactly there Okay, so let me actually drag this down here just to confirm these numbers add up. Okay, looks like it checks out. Okay, let me go back here. Again, this table is only for year one reward budget. Moving on to the next section is the pixels, where it uh, is used to describe the two outdoor sensors, your type one and type two. Within those two types, there's two different tiers in a pixel. Tier one is for highly populated density, um, which is roughly 0.72 kilometer square uh, miles per pixel. And down here is the projected daily reward budget breakdown per year, per tier um, for year one. You can see that tier one earns more than tier two. Down this paragraph uh, gives an idea what the goal is and that is to have as many pixels as possible worldwide with one type 1 sensor and five type 2 sensor. Anything beyond that uh, might not be valuable. So they implemented this reputation system uh, structure where each sensor is awarded 100 points set up bonus the first time it's hooked up to the Planet Watch uh, network. So if a sensor is reliable, streams more than 50%, it gets a one point and that is deemed as a qualifying event. Uh, on the contrast, if it fails and it drops more than 50% of the data streams, then you actually lose one point. And here's some additional rules that is taken into consideration. Uh, in each pixel, the type one sensor, which gets first installed um, for at least 30 days from that pixel is entitled to this 100 point uh, pioneer. Likewise, the first type 2 sensor installed in each pixel earns the Pioneer bonus. But do keep in mind these bonuses are only earned once in a lifetime, even if the sensor changes location. And here, here's the local reputation score where it talks about if the reputation score in this new, uh, is move, it resets the counter to zero, regardless what your score was in the previous pixel. Okay, so once you move, your score resets to zero. So keep that in mind. Down here, it talks about the lead and the backup sensor for type one and type two only. So in each pixel, the type one sensor with the highest score uh, earns that lead type one sensor status. Likewise, there is a total of five type two sensors with the lead um, being the lead if they're the highest reputation score. Uh, other type 1 and type 2 uh, acts as the backup uh, role, which earns far less than the lead, which I'll show you right now. This is important because your ROI uh, is going to be substantially different if you're a lead versus a backup. Let's go down to this rewards rates section. Uh, this table shows you the type 1 and type 2 sensors uh, depending on the pixel tier system. You can see that um, the lead versus the backup sensor, uh, the reward structure is quite different. The lead earns about 1.73 uh, tokens per stream, but of course you have to follow the 80%, 20% uh, rule 
we don't get all of that. We only get 80% of it and the remaining 20% goes back to Planet Watch. Uh, let me scroll down to this table to show you the estimate breakdown for each uh, type of sensors by tier versus lead and backup sensor. So these are estimates only um, based on the for the max daily rewards per sensor you can earn. The difference between the top uh, table and the bottom table is the top table is 100% uh, reward. The bottom table is where you actually want to look at because out of that 100% uh, Planet Watch gets the 20%. So this is the 80% uh, table here. You can see the difference between the lead sensor and the backup sensor for each tier. The lead earns uh, roughly about 133 planets per day while the backup you know, earns uh, only 13 planets per day which means uh, you're earning much less than what a type 4 actually earns so you have to be really really careful where you deploy these type 1 and type 2 sensors what pixels and your row as a lead or a backup because your ROI is going to be greatly affected these type 1 and type 2 sensors are not cheap uh, compared to your type 4 Atmo 2 Pro so just keep that in mind so let's move on to um, find out what happens when there's too many devices deployed on the Planet Watch uh, network. Uh, it essentially becomes saturated. Once we get to that saturation point, the rewards uh, structure is going to be impacted. Ultimately, your rewards um, will be reduced. And this table shows you the example of that half billion uh, planets uh, annual reward pool. You can see. On type 4 uh, it went from 23 to I think 10 so let me scroll up just to double check so for type 4 it starts at 23 you know what let me screen capture this just for reference here okay scroll down here just so we can uh, compare side by side uh, what happens when it's saturated so at the point of saturation your type 4 um, went from on the right hand side 23 planets to now uh, just 10 planets and then conversely your type 3 went from 30 to 7 uh, and then your type 1 and 2 uh, also reduces by this amount here but I do want to uh, point out and emphasize that there is an unused recycle bin that they may be able to pull out to offset the budgeting uh, deficit and here's additional contributions to the reward pool they recognize that over time there's going to be a strong number of increase uh, coupled with having events every four years uh, to mitigate this they came up with two strategies the first one is uh, once the saturation point does reach basically they're going to take the tokens from the recycle bin and put it on the reward pool uh, given that there is enough uh, tokens in the recycle bin to restore the max daily rewards for each sensor type. The second mitigation is through the use of earth credits. So if an entity or a government agency that is interested in the air quality data, uh, they have to purchase earth credits. That earth credit then gets converted back into planets and the planets are allocated based on the table provided here. 40% goes back to the um, owner who uh, streamed that sensor data, 40% goes to the recycle bin, and of course 20% goes to Planet Watch. This works uh, similarly like Helium with their data credits. To increase awareness, let me show where the community resides. These are the main social media platforms as of today to have a Twitter page at Planet Watch SAS. That's this one here with roughly almost 3,000 followers. Three weeks ago, I remember this number being only um, shy of 1,000. So it is a, a fast growing community. In addition to this page, I also follow the CEO Claudio um, to monitor any updates from him. Aside from Twitter, we also have a Planet Watchers subreddit, which is created by Feral Feather. So big shout out to this guy. He actually creates a very comprehensive uh, setup 
and install guide for a wide range of uh, approved sensors uh, by Planet Watch. So again, thank you for all these information that you're sharing with us. Uh, you can find them as you scroll down to um, you know some of these posts uh, weeks ago. As of now, it's got 420 members in this subreddit, but I can see that in the coming weeks or months, this number is going to increase. Let's uh, move on to Telegram. On Telegram, you can find them by searching up uh, Planet Watch. Currently, we have roughly 1,500 members. I joined this um, chat maybe when it was only 600 members. Um, at the time when not many of these people were actually community uh, Planet Watch community members. Uh, I believe it was only uh, Claudio himself and Sarah who was in the chat and everybody else were mainly just regular members. Now you have people who join as Planet Watch community members including Sean, Suhail, uh, of course you know uh, Feral Feather, Annie, and let me see who else uh, here sorry if I miss anybody here but I think those are the main people that I uh, ask questions and get answers by um, let me see double check here Oop, I think that's it um, so uh, word of caution be very careful on this platform there's a lot of scammers who claim that you haven't activated uh, some license you have to click on this link and as soon as you click on that link you know it's going to ask you for your keys and if you enter it they're gonna steal your keys so be extra extra careful on that very quick uh, general updates uh, concerning this project um, so these are the updates here the very first one is the discord channel beginning next week we're gonna have it uh, and that's per Twitter announcement uh, recently. This is amazing. I, I love Discord and I do not like Telegram because it's so inconvenient. Uh, in addition to Discord, they're going to be creating a Telegram announcement channel. So anytime there's news, uh, they'll broadcast that message on that channel. Uh, this is to be determined uh, based on the previous AMA. Same thing with the Planet Watch update, um, the, the app. They're planning to do an amp up on the app but the uh, uh, time frame is to be determined there is also a roadmap that's in progress and that is uh, yet to be determined but this is a, according to the AMA uh, that occurred on June 21st other than these you have the type 3 sensor uh, availability uh, worldwide at least 500 and by the end of September so if you buy the license now it secures you a spot to purchase a sensor. In addition to this you have the first scientific paper uh, in co collaboration with uh, Ubino that talks about hospital air qualities. This was published uh, yesterday and this is through their Twitter. You also have type 1 sensor currently 260 um, in multiple batches July and August batches but unfortunately this is not for the US so I didn't tune in too much on it but we are waiting uh, for this to be available once it gets on the US market. Type 4 the ammo tube uh, pro the supply I've seen that on the Planet Watch uh, website including Amazon and eBay these are being depleted at a pretty alarming rate so people are buying them. With this I'm going to conclude this video if you found it helpful uh, feel free to give me a thumbs up or subscribe to this channel. I appreciate your support. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to use the AlgoWatch bot to better monitor the health of your sensor streams. Adios.